Aaron. <laughs> Everybody can hear me okay? Yep. Yes. All right. Cool. I probably sound kind of stuffy. Um, my daughter got a cold when we were in Chicago, and I thought my wife and I avoided it, but it looks like it got us um, two days ago. So uh, anyways, hopefully that's not a big issue. Um, I'm on nice cough medicine, so that seems to be working. I'm cleared up. Um, my sound was off of my iPad. Okay, now. Great. Good, Karen. Um, and let's talk really quickly about the next class. I'll be turning in um, that to OSA today. Um, and it looks like September 15th, if we continue with Wednesdays, uh, is when that would start. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of liking the six week. I think four weeks is a bit short, um, but if you guys would prefer to have more four week classes, like if that somehow makes you feel better, um, as far as, you know, I don't know, we could do multiple four week classes during a term. So it could be like, next year we could almost have six shorter four week classes or we can continue with the six week which kind of is my preference it gives us enough time to cover everything but if we do four weeks we can just have them kind of piggybacking on each other um and um what i'm hoping to do for the first class next time is really focusing in on tonalism because through tonalism, we really do get to work on design and everything else. I know a lot of people missed the design class early last year. And with tonalism, with a focus on that, um, which is really fun and really beautiful, and you guys, so many of you did really great at tonalism. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun. It'll be tonalism um, with some luminism, which means kind of making the glowy kind of feel, even if it's um, not super colorful. So, um, and I could even do eight weeks if we really want to go crazy and uh, really deep dive into it and have time to work on our projects. Um, we could do a full eight weeks focusing on basically tonalism with the subcategory being design and composition. I guess you'd also have values in there too because tonalism is all about values. What do you guys think about that? Would you guys be okay to do that? And then when we got to winter term, what we could do is kind of more of a focus on impressionism and color. And that's always fun to do during the winter. You know, I love doing a lot of color during the dreary winter months. It's a lot of fun. Um, and tonalism works great with fall colors as well. So <laughs> kind of nice. You get your Thanksgiving uh, themed uh, pumpkin spice paintings done in the fall and uh, okay. really beautiful colorful pa impressionistic paintings done in the winter okay, okay. so okay. now it's question time what I do you like, all think about I that i like six weeks or eight weeks uh six weeks would have a stop october 27th and eight weeks would be november 10th so we'd still end up quite a bit before thanksgiving which is good yeah, maybe eight weeks is great then. Would would that matter? Would that discourage anybody if we did eight weeks versus six weeks? Would anybody not do the class because that feels like too much? And you can always um, not do not sign up for all of them as well. Um, I'm kind of slow at, at painting and catching up. So having the extra time is good. I Yeah, I agree. And I feel like I'm even myself rushing through a lot of these projects. And I've started like five paintings and I'm only finishing one or two of them with you guys. So yeah, I think more time might be really nice. Anybody not like eight weeks, maybe raise your hand if you would rather that it is six weeks. Oh, that makes that easy. Are those all three week or three hour classes? They would be, yeah. Um, you know, and you're always able to just sign off when you want and then come back and watch the video or you know it's it's your time um i'll At be nine, here nine o'clock nine a.m do you guys prefer nine a.m i do oh, nine thirty is when we used to do it but i kind of like nine a.m nine a.m is better <clears throat> okay makes it easier okay nine a.m <laughs> eight weeks nine a.m 
and tonalism, which inevitably goes over um, design. All my classes deal with design and composition, truly. But design and composition, and the great thing about tonalism is because we're um, not working with a full, full palette of colors, you um, get to focus in on design and your values more. So I think that'll be great. And then that will lead us into winter term, which will be impressionism, more brushwork and color. Um, Michael, are any of them gonna be a combo so that we might see you personally in a class that, that is also a Zoom class? I was kind. I was thinking about doing that this fall, but um, I'm seeing that we're gonna have to do masks again indoors oh, okay. in Oregon. And teaching on Zoom with a mask on seems really strange. And I personally don't like wearing a mask. You're right. You're right. I was forgetting that. Yeah. So um, uh, hopefully, maybe by winter term. And I, I do hate to say that because I do know there's a couple students who are not doing my Zoom classes anymore. And I respect that, you know, they just prefer the in-person classes. Um, and so I understand that. And I love being in person as well. Um, but I also love the Zoom class. I love the fact that I've got, you know, you students from all over the place and the fact that it's recorded and all the other things that go with it. So um, <laughs> for, for fall term, I'm planning to do Zoom class again. And hopefully I'll just keep getting better at it. Um, and maybe I'll clean my studio one day and you'll have a nice <laughs> background. Don't I want to breath. tell you one thing before you go any farther. I loved meeting your wife. She is beautiful and lovely. And I think everybody should get to meet her somewhere along the line. Oh, thank you. Bring her she online one day to say hello to everybody. <laughs> yeah, I should have her join us one of the classes. She's so, she's really great. She's super funny and mm -hmm. super social. Yeah, she is great. And uh, it was really neat having her. Um, at the uh, art in the park, art in the garden. Um, that was really neat. So thank you, um, and thanks for all the work you did for that. Um, You're welcome. Um, so good. Okay, so we've got it figured out. I will submit all of that. It's going to be an eight-week class starting at nine a.m. on Wednesdays, with a focus on tonalism, and of course that will cover design and uh, values. <laughs> and we're going to have a lot of fun, and it's going to be beautiful. And as always. I will be, you know, primarily doing landscapes, um, but that does not mean that if you wanted to do portraiture, or still life, or whatever else, you are totally welcome. Um, I'm going to grab a painting really quickly. That I thought I thought this one would be a lot of fun to work on as a group. Um, this is one maybe some of you have seen. These oh. are some cattails. This is this is a plain air painting I did, but you can see the really it's almost kind of got that photographic quality with the kind of tight and rendery um, cattails and the very fuzzy background. Mm -hmm. I thought that that might be a lot of fun for us um, to do because it has a lot with depth, perspective, and um, just values. You can see how the both the darks and the lights really want to come forward. And the kind of softer, bluer, hazier stuff really wants to fall back. So if you guys are up to that, I would love for that to be kind of probably our final project. So probably like the last three weeks of our tonalism will be something like this. If, you know, this is not your thing, you could absolutely put flowers or anything else. You can substitute anything. But I want to talk to you about the, um, the illusion of depth in a painting. So um, what we'll do is kind of the normal first three weeks of the class, or no, it's eight weeks long. Um, <laughs> anyways, we'll figure it out. but uh, if you guys are down for that, I thought that that would be a lot of fun to do as a group. And there's so much different things you can do with the cattails. I mean, um, you know, they can be coming in at any direction and any angle. And I have a number of references I'll be sharing um, of that. And also in the fall is when the cattails look like that. So. Uh, when they're starting to uh, bloom out and get all crazy. Um, so, great. Uh, I would love to have you include some seascapes also, in seascapes. addition to what, yeah. Okay, let's do it, yeah. All right, so, tonalism, seascapes, and, uh, and cattailscapes. <laughs> <laughs>
Perfect. All right. I love it. I'm excited for next class. All right. Let's get through this one first. Um, <laughs> so today, um, I, I don't know why, but when I went on the uh, Facebook page, it looked like nobody had posted anything. And then I went on this morning and there's like 20 new things posted on there. I don't know if you guys just all posted in the last day or two, or I just somehow didn't do it correctly. My page didn't update. Um, so we have a lot of uh, stuff on there um, to go through really quickly, if you would like. What I can also do is do, because last time we spent almost an hour and a half critiquing and looking at the page, and I know that that was tiring for some of you. Um, would you rather I do that at the end of the class, do start off with painting, and then go to the critique afterwards? And maybe that's something we can talk about in the future, too. Because, yeah, I've gotten a number of, not a number, but a couple comments from you guys saying uh, the critiques are long and a little bit tough. Um, so let's share, save the critique on there for last. Um, and that gives you guys, um, Lori, if you are still trying to figure out a post on there and stuff, it'll give you guys a couple minutes um, to post some pictures. And look at the turnout, you guys. This is fantastic. I think almost everybody is here. Um, besides the two people that let me know they weren't coming. So that's fantastic. All right, way to show up for the last class. <laughs> um, and uh, so today um, is about color and uh, a little bit about brushwork. What I have done, I'm going to switch over to the other view here. I think. There it is. Okay, so I'm gonna do two paintings today. At least that's my goal. What you see here is a um, quick, quick plain air painting that I did. I kind of, uh, this was my third painting of the day out at, a, out at some vineyards with some friends. And uh, this is a 16 inch by 20 inch. So it was my last panel and it was too big and we were too hot. So I basically just kind of got it started. I just scrubbed in some colors. You can see that the canvas was pink to start with. Um, I'll be end up covering most all of that and I'll have to focus. It looks like it's a little bit out of focus. Um, but what I want to do is kind of quickly come back over and just show you again. Um, this kind of goes back to the story I told you guys about when I did plain air for a summer and just did lots and lots of little studies. And then I was able to bring them back into the studio and color them up. So I'm gonna do that one. And then the other picture that I wanted to work on was the trees, um, the coastal Cypress, California <laughs> Cypress trees um, from last year or last week, um, going in and coloring that. The only, the reason I picked this one up to do first was that the, the Cypress tree painting is actually gonna be fairly tonalist um, cause it's got a very warm yellow kind of a sky and uh, more muted colors. So I thought with this one, I could bring in more color and have a little more fun, a little more freedom. And um, yeah, and so we could discuss. And this one has a lot more depth and perspective in it, hopefully. Um, and it's not a very good <laughs> painting to start with. So what do I need to do to make this more interesting, right? What do I need to do to uh, lead the eye through it? So I'm gonna go ahead and step over there, try to get it into focus. And um, I'm gonna quickly add color and add a sense of depth because you can see the background, I didn't even hardly do anything to it. It's far too light and far too warm. Doesn't really, anyways, the picture's not reading right, but I've got at the beginning of a design. Michael, is yeah. there any chance that, um, in today's class, you can briefly um, talk us through the earliest assignment, which was um, just kind of black and white that you were gonna colorize the acrylic with painting. a glaze. Yeah, the acrylic painting. Yeah, I, I, I did my black and white, but I have no idea how you glaze that. Were you going to cover that um, sure. in this, this, these classes? Quick change of plan. Yep. Perfect. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, oh, I, would, I would love to see that too. I started <laughs> the painting yeah. from the same photo. So 
and I, I'm struggling with the colors. It's just sitting over there in the corner. So the uh, reason I'm switching these around the uh, holders is one side has a lip and the other side has little razor blades that hold panels in place. And I generally don't like the lip because it gets in the way of the painting surface. So I almost paint, almost always paint it with the uh, razor blades or the little, their teeth basically, little metal teeth. And that's that way there's nothing in front of me when I'm painting it. You know what I mean? There's nothing in between me and this. The, um, but the other part, there's little screws here that you can't see that I've attached to this. And behind those screws, I can put the panels. Um, and that's why, you see it on top here, on top, so there's these little screws. So when it's a flat panel, versus the box, then I just slide them between, behind these screws and they just sit out in front. So that's kind of a little modification um, I've done. Let me know if that did not make sense at all, but. Um, all right, so quick question for you. With this painting, I actually got some transparent acrylic paint um, so I could glaze with that, but the only problem is I couldn't do oils. Would you, well, maybe I'll save that for next time, for the next class. But I did go to the art store and find acrylic, um, transparent acrylic, kind of an earthy brown red color. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Um, an earthy brown red color. So in the next class, remind me when we're doing tonalism, and I'll bring that out. Let's do the oils just because I think that's what most of you are going to do. Thank um, you. Yeah, so I can use my Galkid, Galkid gel, Galkid, uh, any, or any, any medium that's a thinner. But the truth is, uh, too bright. Um, the truth is a lot of times just a touch of paint thinner with transparent colors. So what I want to do is look on the back of my tube and I want to look for gambling. It's at the very bottom and just says transparent or semi-transparent or opaque or semi-opaque. And opaque means it's like painting with mud, very thick and very high coverage. Transparent would be like painting with tea where, you know, you can see right through it. Um, and um, so I usually want to do my glazing primarily with transparent colors. Um, trying to decide what colors we should do this uh, as. Um, a lot of times I'll grab a slightly bigger brush too. Um, any color ideas, suggestions here? I can do basically any color. Photo reference was a kind of a ready glow, reddish glow. And I'm having yeah. real trouble. Okay, let's do, let's bring out our quinacridone red, which is our transparent red. Um, I'll bring out a touch of my Indian yellow to mix into that to warm it up just a little bit. And what I did was just thin it with the paint thinner a little bit. And you can see how transparent that is. And the truth is, I didn't even, I bet you, let's just wipe that off. Let's do it without any, any medium because the color is so transparent. I bet you I could just scrub it on there. So yeah, you can see there, it's more of a catch up, kind of a warm, warm red. And that's without medium, just because the color is so transparent just by scrubbing it on there. Can you hear that noise of me just scrubbing it on? The acrylics are very dry. I can be pretty brutal to them. I'm not using a you know nice brush. And then I can just take my paper towel and gently wipe that around. Michael, I wonder if you've got your computer on I don't know whether it's speaker view or whatever 
makes it stay on you when other people talk. Uh huh. Um, I think that would be helpful for the recording. Oh, is it not doing that? Yeah, I think it's switching to other people when they speak or when they move. Oh, okay. I thought I had it there muted. And there's something I can't remember. You said it last time. There's something. Yeah, I pinned it. Spotlight. Spotlight. Oh, that's yeah. it. Yeah, you can also pin him if you go to instructor. And there's three little dots up in the corner of the right. You can, it says pin, and then you won't see anybody else either. But I think it's also helpful if we all mute our mics unless we want to speak. So, yeah, I do have myself pinned. Um, oops, remove pin. I guess I just removed it. Um, So spotlight for everyone. Let's see what that does. All right, let's see if that works. Man, that looks so dark. Does that look dark for you guys or is that okay? It looks, it looks, yeah, it looks like right before, you're right after the sunset. Oh, I know, there's one more light I haven't turned on yet. There we go, oh, glary though. There we go, okay. So anyways, there we have a very kind of orangey color there. I'm going to take a tiny bit of paint thinner on the end of my towel, and I'm just going to come in and remove it from my sky. And what's happening is basically the um, paint will start to absorb into the gesso or into the white acrylic paint. Um, so it's kind of staining it is how I think of it. Um, when you're dealing with these transparent layers, um, you have a little while to keep working it, um, which already you can kind of see this kind of nice silhouette uh, um, light on there. Um, I don't know exactly where the reference is for this. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't want to waste time looking for that too much. Um, but then what I can do is I could come back in and I could, um, let's go ahead and do it. Let's bring some blue, transparent blue, which is my manganese here. It'd be weird because the blue plus the orange will make kind of a brown, right? Because um, they're mixing kind of across the color wheel from each other. Take my paper towel again. So there it's cooling it down a little bit. That sky, it's quite white still because my uh, very thin blue paint on there. And I could stop at any point, um, you know, and I could just glaze the whole thing one color. I can, you know, glaze, spot glaze. I could, you know, come in and add more transparent blue and make the sky stronger if I want. I can do anything at this stage. But what I'm kind of basically doing a lot of the time when I do this, where I go from black and white to color, is that I'm just kind of establishing some big areas of color. And um, I can do, again, as much or as little. And then what I will often do is let that tack up or dry for a day or two or even a couple hours. And then I can come back over and uh, put thicker, I can put thick paint right on top of it. And so it's just kind of a way to cover my canvas, figuring out my design, my values. Let's bring some, you can even glaze in with some darker color. I'm gonna glaze in a bit of green into some of these trees and uh,
does this make sense you guys kind of what how i would go about using this as a tool to build my painting up it's not going to be the end all be all for me generally if you look to um, the artist norman rockwell and see how he was layering his glazes he um didn't talk a lot about his technique so a lot of it's still kind of mystery but um there's a number of artists who would paint you know figure out their glazing if you think like the painting the girl with the pearl earring it's another great example where it's just done in these nice transparent thin glazes building up one over the other and uh but you would want to let those layers dry in between so maybe using a medium in that instance uh, to speed up the drying time a little bit and to keep the bond of the paint to the surface if you're using just too much paint thinner you are not going to have a really great bond to the painting surface what a problem for your green what's that Oh, I was wondering what colors are you mixing there for your green? Uh, ultramarine with just a touch of yeah, lemon yellow or in, uh, light yellow, but it's so much little that it's not even showing up. Um, really, it just doesn't feel very green. Um, let's pretend that it's a little drier and I can come back in and I'm gonna make a green that's more opaque. So let's pretend that it's dry. And now I can just come back in with thicker paint. It's not light enough. Let's see if I can make that a little better focus too. Looking to the end of that brush, how to focus. I had a trouble with one painting I was trying to glaze where it was seemed like the layer was so slippery, nothing was sticking to it. So I wonder if I used too much alkyd gel. Yes, the gels are very slippery. And that's why I kind of don't use too much of them. Um, they make a very shiny and very slippery surface. Um, and other paints do have a hard time binding to them later. Um, so yeah, it's, it's tricky. You just want to use just a touch. When I'm using the, um, the paint thinner, I mean the mediums, a lot of times I just dip like the corner of my brush into it and then mix that into the paint. Just a couple of drops is all you need. Um, it's a very strong glue to help, you know, to adhere to the surface. But yeah, if you use too much, um, it really can get, get in your way. I'm just gonna go ahead and lighten this up real fast. So we can see it. I know that still reading is real dark. Um, let's pretend that these trees are kind of more in the shadow. And then I'm going to go ahead and lighten up and pretend these trees are picking up the sunlight, like the lights coming from the right side across. So the lights hitting the tops of these trees. So I can build up the painting really fast this way, but um, yeah, let me know, did that make sense really quickly for just why I would do kind of the black and white and then glaze in, I could do any color. Here's the cool thing too. Let's just pretend I get to this point and I'm like, wow, that's really horrendous. What were you thinking? Just take some paint thinner to it on my paper towel. I've got a couple minutes where I can literally just change my mind. So now it's just kind of a brown because of all the colors, but it's got the paint thinner. And look at that. I'm right almost, almost all the way back to where I started. So now I could just say, you know what? Red was the wrong idea. I think it should have been a blue. 
to start with. Michael, if you'd wiped all that back um, and the underpainting had been done in oils rather than acrylics, would it have wiped away more of the underpainting? If the oils are super dry, then no, generally you're okay. okay. But the oils definitely don't dry nearly as fast as the acrylics. So there's been times, yeah, where I think they're really dry and all of a sudden it starts wiping back away. Um, and there's so many things that, you know, come into play with that. Um, and so definitely if I knew I was just doing an underpainting with my oils, I would want to keep the paint pretty thin so that they're drying faster, maybe use, paint, you know, some of the different colors, the darker colors, the earthier earth colors, they'll tend to dry a little faster. Um, but yeah, what I like is, look, I mean, what a different feel from the orange to this, you know. Um, And again, I can just kind of, you know, do that, set it down for a little bit, um, let that dry. It'll be dry by tomorrow. Um, and that's another reason I like to work on multiple paintings at a time is uh, I can come back in and change that. I mean, I can do it now with other colors. So that was blue. So if I add yellow into the sky, it's gonna lean towards green. So what I'll probably do is I can just lean in with a little bit of red. And hopefully that'll take it towards purple. Kind of a, a different kind of a purple. There's a lot of fun you can have. You can see how subtle that is. Um, you know, and then I can come back in and cover my trees any colors I want. Um, just a way to do this some sky. Let's go ahead and add a little yellow and see what happens. Going to make the light feel again like it's kind of coming from the right side. Isn't that interesting? Just this kind of little cell, almost kind of has a watercolor feel to it. Very interesting. I can even come back in again with a little paint thinner and lighten up a little bit if I want. So I added the paint thinner and I'll just kind of come in and Can you guys see that very well? I know it's very subtle. It's very subtle even here in the studio. It's amazing. Um, let's darken the blue on the outside so it just becomes a little more extreme. Would you always paint over the glazing then when you're finishing the painting or would you leave the sky just glazed? It's up to you. It's a total, I mean, there's no rules. Um, I'm pretty much making this up every time I paint it. And so, you know, I will paint it. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of paint thinner just because that's kind of thick. And um, there's no rules. It's just like, I just kind of like the feeling of more texture and paint on my canvas. Um, and that's always just kind of been a pet peeve about my own style of painting is that it's quite thin appearing. Um, and maybe I should stop fighting it since obviously that's what I want it. My body wants to do how it wants to paint is thinner paint. Um, yeah, pretty fun. I mean, so just the, the main thing to be aware when you're glazing is think of, and grab the color wheel real quickly here. Think of the color wheel, okay? Again, we're using this, the split primaries, the two yellows, two reds, and two blues. Um, 
you could be using any palette you want, you know, any colors you want. But just be aware that, you know, when the yellow and the blue touch, they're going to make green. When the yellow and the red touch, they're going to go to orange. When the red and the blue touch, they're going to make purple, right? So just be aware of that. And if the yellow touches the purple anywhere, you're going to end up with brown. If the orange touches the blue anywhere, you're going to end up with brown. So if you don't want brown in your sky, which happens a lot when we're just beginning to experiment with transparent colors, then you just can't let colors from across the color wheel touch. Okay, if you ever want to neutralize, let's say you've got a blue and it's just so blue, or even let's just say a purple, and your purple is so extremely purple, and you want to knock it down a little bit, what would I do? What should I do? Add yellow. Yes, exactly right. Just look across the color wheel and you can begin to neutralize the colors. But it, if, you're, if you're getting muddy colors, which I don't really even like that term, muddy colors, because most of my paintings are 90% muddy colors in a lot of people's you know, minds. Um, but I think what they mean is unwanted colors or colors, you know, they could be beautiful colors or just in the wrong place. I like to think of those colors as like weeds. Weeds can be really beautiful, but if you don't want them in that spot in your garden, then they're unwanted. Um, so there's no bad colors, no good colors, they're just in the wrong spot. Um, so if you want a very vibrant and glowy sky or flower petals or whatever it is in your painting, just know that you probably want to be um, not mixing across the color wheel. Once you start doing that, it starts dying off really quickly or neutralizing, I should say. Does that make sense? But yeah, I kind of like this. Now I'm, you know, I see this and I'm like, okay, and actually I bet you in one hour I could come back in and paint into this no problem. Um, it will tack up so quickly because the paint's so thin. Um, and I could come back in and add whatever details I want to the trees. I can, you know, figure out what color scheme I want in here. And I know that the uh, painting, the, the reference had a very warm feel to it. But if I remember right, it's actually the light hitting the trees that's glowing. And I think it has to have some of that blue cool in the background to make the warm of the trees more effective. Um, so I think this could be a good base for that. We'll see. Um, and if I find the reference and get back into this painting, I will let you know. Did that answer um, questions for you guys? Yes. 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 <laughs> Here are... Um, for our design class, we did a number of black and white um, paintings. And I also did these two in black and white. And then this is just on paper, so it dried really fast. And so that's just very, very thin transparent glazes. And I just asked the class what colors, and it was pink and green were the colors we decided to glaze with. Um, and so you could see, you know, it's just very thin, just right on paper. Um, I think that's the oil painting paper, but it really does some neat things. And there's just a tiny, tiny dash of a really light pink against the green, which is always one of my favorite little color uh, things. So anyways, that was a lot of fun. So if you're curious about it, just grab some um, oil painting paper or, you know, little canvases. And um, these were done. I think with acrylic paint underneath, just really, really quick. And these are uh, four values. So it's the light is the sky and the water or just the sky. The second lightest is the ground. The third lightest is the hillsides at like a 45 degree angle. And then your uprights, the upright grasses and the upright trees become your darkest. And that's all it takes to make the illusion of a landscape is just four values so have fun with that. Just play with that a little bit. Four values, one, you know, one, the lightest, the sky, the water, the second lightest being the ground plane, the third, the 45 degree angles on the hills. And then you've got your upright planes. 
And of course, landscapes don't always work like that, but if you do it, they're always gonna look like a landscape. So it's kind of a funny, cool little trick. Um, and then you can just have fun with different col color combinations of uh, glazing and see what happens. And maybe write some notes. All right, here is the notes on that. So you can see the number one, number two, three and four, and then just a quick example of it in process, in, uh, in use. All right. All right, let's take a five minute break, you guys, and I'll change back to the other um, surface and clean up my brushes a little bit and clean this painting surface. Any questions about glazing really quickly, and we'll do more on that in the next class as well. But have fun, experiment with that in the you know, five weeks, six weeks between class if you have time and the inclination. Any questions? I missed uh, what glazing you used. Oh, oils? Yeah, with oil. That's what, what, I, what medium, what medium did, were you using? Uh, just paint thinner. Okay. But I could have used a little bit of Galkid gel if I wanted to. But I usually don't use very much in the first layer. Um, the, the, the gesso is kind of thirsty or the um, acrylic paint is kind of thirsty. So it'll soak it in. So it's kind of just like staining it. Um, yeah. And... I don't know, I just feel like there's more control. And the more galkid you use, um, somebody else mentioned this too, that it can become very slick and very not absorbent. The galkids um, and a lot of the different mediums can dry to a very crystalline um, surface, which can make them very slippery and hard to apply paint. So generally don't use very much medium, just uh, you know, up to maybe 15, 20% in your paint but not more. All right, five minute break, everybody. I'm gonna go make, uh, make another little uh, hot, um, hot honey drink real quick. Be right back. I don't know whether anybody's interested in uh, framing. Um, in Portland yesterday, I found out that if you register at it as an artist with Beards Framing, you get 25% discount, which is pretty good. Anyway, I thought that was something that needed to be shared.
Somebody said something about registering with Beards as an artist and you get 25% off. How do you do that? How do you register with them? I'm sorry, if you were talking to me, I just got no. Back. No, I was talking to the lady who talked about 25% off at Beards Framing. Yeah, it was I. Um, I just found it out yesterday. All you have to do is go in. I was framing some things for OSA. And uh, first of all, they were going to give me just 20% because it was OSA. Then she said, if you are an artist and you register with us, which is just a matter of walking in and saying, I'm an artist, um, all, all of your future framing will be at 25% discount. Uh, their prices are really quite good. I was surprised because I've been doing a lot of things online framing and um, the act actually the prices were better uh, going into the, into the shop. I, I was really kind of astonished. Sorry, all of you who aren't in Portland, but <laughs> Um, in any event, it, it was, uh, I thought it was worth sharing. All you have to do is walk in and say, hi, I'm an artist. <laughs> oh, okay. And they're well, a believer. <laughs> thank you. That'd be awesome if they're like, prove it. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of had the feeling they were going to. But <laughs> All right, trying to figure out where my glare is coming from here. So I'm going to shut that window. Whew, okay, and cough medicine. I've got my hot tea and my honey. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, we have some pure, pure uh, New Zealand honey. So ran down there and got that. Um, so hopefully I'm all good. And uh, I'm excited to get into this. So like I was saying, this is a kind of interesting, um, still getting a crazy glare. Must be there. Huh. All right, we might have a little bit of glare on the palette. Hopefully that's okay. Um, anyways, uh, I think this painting has the beginning of an interesting design. How it kind of wants to lead the eye back. Back here just completely gets wiped away and, and lost. Um, and these are kind of um, these are vineyards here, but they're all kind of going away like sideways to the viewer so we didn't have all the uh, stripes going back into space. And I'm trying to figure out if I want to play that up. I also don't really care for this really, really warm, hot passage back here. I think, by, again, I was saying it's kind of the end of the day. It was really warm. Um, I would rather bring this back to the blues and grays. And I was kind of thinking it might be fun to bring purples kind of into these shadows a little more, kind of a gray purple into the shadow areas. Um, so that way I can introduce kind of the idea of depth and perspective and how to use that um, in this painting. I don't even have a photo reference for this. So we get the complete liberty of getting to make it up from here. So hopefully, that will be fun. And a cool little trick that I wanted to show you guys that I've been using, especially when I'm out plein air painting, is you guys have probably all seen these little um, like two, three dollar back scratchers, right? They're great for throwing into your plein air bag. And what they're really nice for is when you're trying to do some nice little detail work and like it's just kind of hard to uh, keep your hands steady. I just put this out and now it steadies my hand really nicely. So it's a really a great little way to, if you're, uh, you know, uh, if you like your coffee as much as I do, or if you're kind of in a windy area and having a tough time getting in there, um, it's, you know, basically they're called mall sticks, M-A-H-L. Um, and a lot of, there's a lot of different ways people make them, but I like this because the little 
back scratch your claws will grab right onto the edge of your canvas, push against it a little bit, and you've got a nice, nice little uh, stick to steady your hand. And it, again, it takes up very little space in your setup. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to get back to design first. This painting is going to be about color here in just a second, but it needs to get a nice and interesting design first. Um, so what I want to do is take the idea of everything kind of slowly leading us back in to the painting and push that. What I do see here is this big kind of cool dark shape here. Because it's so big, it's the same size as this one, it doesn't fall back into space as much. So we're going to use diminishing size. We're going to use diminishing dark. So it's the darkest darks and the warmest darks are going to be towards the front. And then those darks are going to get cooler. And I'm talking about the shadow areas here. Cooler, bluer, a little more purple, and then really quite blue and cool as they come back into here. Okay. We're also going to add more. I, looks like I didn't even bother painting the fields and the colors back here. So then we're going to get all those interesting shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and mix some darks first, because that's what I need to give me my design and my structure. What I just grabbed there was my Payne's Gray. Um, it's not a color that's on my supply list, um, but it's a color I really like using. It's a very dark blue gray, and it's just a very, it's like a shortcut color. Um, to make it dark for me, especially when I'm just looking into the shadows. And I'm going to go ahead and bring a little bit of quinacridone red into it. So that should make a very warm dark. I'll bring them over in front of the camera so hopefully we can see the difference a little better. Um, when they're so dark, they're really hard to see. So this is my original Payne's Gray. And here is the Payne's Gray plus some of my quinacridone red. I could actually even add in a little bit of the manganese red and really make it nice and hot if I want. Um, and I add a little bit of my French ultramarine to darken that just a touch again. And let's add a little white to it. Not, not in the middle because I, I want it to be super dark, but this is a good way to test the color. So there you see, when I mix white with it, it becomes very purple. I'm going to pull that aside because I don't want it to contaminate. Um, and I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow. So the yellow, again, just like we talked about earlier, is going to neutralize this purple. And it is going to be the darks within these trees in the foreground, these kind of bushy, kind of oaky trees here. So I'm going to add a little white again just to test it. There we go. So the purple got a little grayer. So I think I'm going to be okay with that for right now. Turn that into a pile with my palette knife so that I can actually load up my brush. And then so I'm going to use those warmer darks in here. And I may even bring in, you know, little spots of more red to really warm up those shadows in the foreground. And then as the shadows go back, they're going to get cooler a little. There's more layers of the cool atmosphere between us and them. So I can take that Payne's Gray and I'm going to lean towards my blues now, mix those in. Have you already decided where your focal point is going to be on this painting? <laughs> you would think I would have. I taught you guys too well. Um, I really, I imagine that this is going to be the focal area. It just seems kind of in the right spot on the canvas. It's kind of going to be interesting here and interesting here, but then I do want your eye to go back in and then come back. So I'm going to guess kind of in here because this is going to have some nice strong contrast some interesting shapes, and the eyes being led there in multiple ways. 
Does that make sense? Yes, that's good. Yeah, it's not going to have a really strong focal. I could bring in like a red barn or a white house or something and put it in there. And maybe I will. Um, yeah, we'll see. Otherwise, there's two fields here. There's a little hill coming down here. And then this field, like a triangle here. So if I made these two fields different colors as well, that would also add interest because they'd be uh, color contrast right near each other. Um, so got different ideas I can play on. And I'm going to let that, sh I'm using this dark now. I'm going to let it get a little bit cooler. Still, I want to, I want to keep it towards purple probably all the way to about back here. And then it'll get more bluish and then really turn really quite blue back here. Very shiny for you guys. Sorry, I was right on that glare spot there. So I'm just kind of trying to decide on some of the cool as it cools down. And again, this is, this is gonna help me in so many ways. These darks are what I'm gonna use to redesign my design, my structure, and I'm gonna figure out my perspective using these. So they're very important to me. I know that with the lighting in here, it's a little bit hard to see the jumps I'm trying to get them to go to as far as getting bluer and lighter as they go back. I don't want them to be so light that they get chalky feeling. But kind of putting them beside each other, I can really hopefully begin to judge. Here's the straight Payne's gray. Here's the one with red added to it. And then it becomes more purple, a little lighter purple. And I think I can blue this one down a little more and maybe cool it down just a touch more. And I know for a lot of you, you'd be like, man, he's sure spending a lot of time doing this, but this is really going to be an important part of the painting. It's literally going to be the bones that the painting is hanging on, the colors and everything else. It's going to give it the structure. Let's go one more value blue lighter. Now I'm thinking way back there. I'm thinking back into the hills. Um, so it can get quite light, not that light. The colors of the shadow are dictated by the source of the light as well. Remember that, that oftentimes a warm light will cast a cool shadow and a cool light will cast a warmer shadow. So I've got to decide, am I having a warmer light today or a cooler light? You know, is it the morning or evening where it might be a warmer light? Kind of the golden hour kind of feel where it could be casting a really cool, cool shadow. Or am I more going towards midday where you can have a cooler light because it's going through all that blue sky um, and it's a casting warmer shadows or like an oh, slightly overcast day can also cast kind of warmer shadows. Don't expect like red shadows and really, really hot shadows, but they'll be, they'll just have a warmer feel to them. 
All right, let's see what that does. And that glare over here, it's, I'm not seeing it where I'm at, but the camera is seeing it. Um, and so that, therefore you guys are seeing it. Let me see if I can do something because that makes it almost impossible to see the colors. Huh. I don't remember this being such a big issue before. That's <laughs> That looks good. Yeah, so I just changed it to about a 25 degree angle to the surface versus a 45, which is what they suggest. All right, yeah, that works out pretty well. Everybody's okay with that? Great. <laughs> you get two seconds to respond. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and knock in some of the darks, and I'm going to show you how they're going to appear in the different spaces on the canvas. And this was kind of a test. I'm not, I'm not positive the values that I just mixed there are really going to work, but let's just test it. And these are going to be kind of blotchy a little bit, a little bit spotty but it's a great way for me to test it. So my darkest darks are gonna be in the bottoms of these areas here, right? They're the closest darks. I mean, maybe I could have some darks in, you know, whatever this is. And I'm, I'm gonna kind of ignore a little bit that these are vineyards. And I'm gonna play up the fact that they're just fields, mostly just because I wanna cover big areas quickly and uh, keep moving with this painting. And I, yeah, I just don't wanna do all the detail. Um, so we're just going to do these nice rolling fields. Let's ignore the vineyards. Um, all right, so there's my dark. You can see how much darker that is. Um, and that should help bring that tree towards us more, especially compared to these trees back here. Let's bring a little bit of that dark in the bottom of the shrubbery down here. So that's really really quite dark. It may be too dark, but I think if I don't overdo it and just let it sit like underneath the bottom sides of kind of the, the uh, canopies of these trees down into the shadows of the, um, down into the shadows of the trunks and whatnot, I think, I think that that could work. And a lot of times the stronger the values between your foreground and your background, the more feeling of depth and perspective you will get. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pretend that for right now, I'm okay with that. And I'll come back in and refine all this. Right now what I'm doing is putting it down. It's kind of like, um, like if you're painting your house and you kind of do little color uh, chips around your house um, of the different colors you're thinking, just to test it. So let's go to the next value and let's push that back here. I'm going to put it beside up here to see how much lighter. It's quite a bit lighter, but it really does look pretty dark, but it's much more purple, isn't it? We'll have to test that. That may be too purple. Maybe I have to gray that down a little bit once we uh, get moving in this painting. All right, now I'm going to bring in the next color and put it into these hill trees back here. So are you guys able to read that pretty well? The darkest, second darkest, third, and now I'm gonna bring the fourth. Yeah. It's gonna to start to turn to blue. You see that it stayed pretty purple. The shadows have stayed pretty warm. The shadows are now gonna to start to cool down quite a bit as we get back here. And we get back here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump all the way back to my hillside. And let's just, uh, let's make a hill. It's pretty dark, actually. I thought that when I was making this blue over here, you see how light it is, but up here, it's not nearly as light as I thought it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix 
and make it lighter. Instead of fighting that, I'm just going to grab a little bit of paint thinner and just wipe it off. Okay, I could just try to, you know, change it by painting over it, um, but then I'd be just putting, throwing good paint after bad. So there we go, it's kind of almost gone. Let's bring our hill back. Okay, much lighter. Now let's use some of that blue and let's bring, so the lightest I went was to here. So now we have this whole area between here and here. And I'm gonna kind of work in reverse and say that there's some trees here. Actually, this needs to be even lighter maybe. And I'm putting it in pretty thin, pretty um, transparent, and I'll be able to come back in and manipulate that. And I'm not thinking about the colors in between. I'm still just thinking my kind of my uprights, my darks, even though they're not very dark comparatively, right? There's gonna be hopefully this big space. It's getting a little darker as I come forward. I'm getting a little bit uh, slapdash, but I got to remember that I want this shape. So this one's coming back, and this is the shape that I'm going to definitely have to fix. Um, so it goes here, 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 back to here. So this, I'm going to put something kind of nice here, maybe a little more substantial. Maybe there's like a little forest in here. And I'm wondering if this blue is just too blue, I could pr probably stand to bring a little bit of that Payne's gray in there so that it doesn't quite get so, it just feels too blue to me. It's too bright. Um, for some of you guys, you know, that might be right up your alley that, you, you know, you're a little more comfortable with bright color. But I kind of like a little more grayed down, especially in my shadows. I'm just thinking kind of my shadow forms and my kind of farms and trees and things might be getting a little closer together back there as I go back into the distance. But I'm going to keep it again on the blue side. So even this yellow sky, which I probably need to adjust here in just a second, is I, I want it to gray down. I don't want that bright, bright, bright yellow. I'm going to go towards kind of an overcasty, kind of a blue sky. So I want to bring in some haze down into the bottom of these hills. I'm going to go ahead and bring this back in there a little bit. The hills way back there. Like they're overlapping a little bit. And right now I'm just kind of testing colors again, testing values, 
getting things kind of covered on there and uh, just it's, it's always testing, right? I can always wipe back down. I can always take my palette knife and get back in there and scrape away. Um, testing, testing, testing. And, you know, again, just step back every once in a while. Does it have the feel and the atmosphere you're after? Let me go ahead and are you guys understanding what I'm doing right now with the shadows and that? And now what I'm going to do is come back into my sky because the sky, the color of the sky, the light from the sky is dictating all the colors and the light here. Like if it's a warmer red sky, every all the colors are warmer and redder. If it's a yellow sky, all the colors are going towards the more golds. If it's a bluer sky, the colors will probably inevitably be a little bit on the cooler side. Um, so I, I want to cool this sky down. I'm going to let little hints of this fun yellow show through, but I don't want it to be the predominant thing. It's not that special when it's everything. So let's go ahead and I got a little bit of paint thinner on there. Get, a, get my white. I'm going to bring even just a touch of pink. Excuse my arm a little bit. Um, just how the camera is, I'm going to move this over. So otherwise, my arm would be right in front of you guys the whole time. So I'm just going to move it over and get this kind of covered. Otherwise, that yellow is going to be mentally, at least, affecting all of our colors. So if I get it covered, I'll be able to read, hopefully, a little better what's going on. Cool thing is, too, this wet into wet, I can really make these back hill shapes really, um, the edges of them very wishy-washy, like they're almost gone because it's kind of a hazy day. Michael, what brush are you using now? Oh, just a really piece of crap, old filbert okay. brush. Um, yeah, it's a huge, well, the true name of it is Utrecht 209. It used to be a flat, but now it's a filbert. And okay. I just grabbed <laughs> that, just a, a brush that I probably used to love. And now I just really treat poorly. Um, but that's the good thing about the brushes is they get continued service. Um, they just become different tools. So that you see that little bit of yellow showing through. It's kind of fun. I kind of like it. Yeah. Um, Great. Yeah, it's kind of pretty. So maybe I can even bring in a touch more of the pink. Oop, that's a lot. Touch of pink. Let's see what that does. I'm just going to throw it right kind of along the bottom like I like to do, kind of around my, along my horizon line, maybe touch of it into the sky. And it's, I mean, that's the cool thing about plain air, right? You can get this kind of nice idea and the feeling, and I've still got the memories of being out there and you know, my previous paintings, which were totally different light situations, morning to midday to afternoon. Um, but it's fun to just kind of come back in and not only just relive the memory, but also kind of like, well, here's what I wish was going on when I was out there a little bit more, maybe. <laughs> and just not be beholden to, this is just basically much whiter. I'm going to do kind of a transition between that pink and the blue. And I'm just letting it be kind of scrubby and a little bit messy, the sky. 
I can come back in and fix it as much as I want. But again, it's just kind of a, a hazy, hazy area back there. If I, um, you know, start to miss some of that yellow again, I can just take my paint, my paper towel. I just ripped off a little piece of it, wad it up a little bit, and I can wipe back away and bring back some of those yellows if I want to. Painting is very dry underneath. It's cool. All right. So now we've got our dark shadows and our lightest kind of uh, value areas back there. Um, so that's pretty cool. Seems like it's out of focus. Does that seem out of focus to you guys? Yes. Huh. Focus, please. Oh. Right about there. Does that seem about the most focus? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Great. So now my job is, since I'm pretty comfortable with these value shifts, um, you know, it's a pretty big jump, maybe right in this area. So I'll kind of merge that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use these darks, come in and lay in my structure. And then I'm going to step back and I'm going to figure out what colors do I want all these fields and stuff. I don't want these warm, warm passages back here at all. Like that's really destroying my uh, feeling of depth. So these are all going to get much cooler and greener and everything else. And maybe I'll warm up some of these a little bit to bring them forward. So first thing, I'm going to come in figure out my dark shapes, my shadow forms. That's again, that gives me my structure and it's gonna give me my sense of depth and perspective. And then is the fun part. I get to come in and mix some beautiful field colors. I could have fields of poppies. I could have fields of clover. I can go crazy. I could have sunflower fields. I can do whatever I want. You can make a whole rainbow of different field colors if you wanted to. Um, I'll probably kind of keep it more in the greens and uh, some kind of uh, kind of a lot of the areas around here are vineyards and grasses that they grow, um, some produce. So anyways, <laughs> excuse me. Let's. Um, anyways, so what I'm going to be doing now for the next little bit and might be a touch boring is coming in and adding my values and kind of re re-establishing my design so just hold tight while i get that in and i can decide too you know with these trees are they too clumpy do i want them to have more space in between you know And I think I will have my light kind of coming from the right to the left. So the, the tops of these trees on this side will be catching the light um, merely because I think that's kind of how I had it initially. So, I mean, this is the fun part and kind of a little bit boring, but you can see even just with 
throwing those darks in how this all of a sudden this stuff up here really wants to start to come forward. So warm darks love to optically come forward per, in, as far as perspective is concerned. It's not boring. <laughs> Well, thank you. I like the kind of, it, it's almost like a weird kind of a magic though, like how there's these certain, you know, again, I don't like the idea of rules or whatever, but these kind of things that happen when you do certain things, you know what I mean? You put big shapes and all of a sudden they come forward, you put dark shapes, they come forward, you put high chromatic, meaning purer color, like brighter colors, and they want to come forward. And it's just these funny rules that if you brought in a not artist or a non-student, they would still understand that instinctually, just because they live in the world. And those are the kind of how we just how we view depth, especially in the Pacific Northwest or anywhere, you know, where there's not where there is more atmosphere. And depending on, you know, how you paint, you could be, you know, I finally went and bought a couple new brushes um, with nice clean edges. So I could be putting, you know, these, even my shadow brush strokes could have these nice structured um, shapes if I wanted to. For some reason, I often like my um, shadows and kind of things to be a little more wishy-washy and then I'll kind of come in and tighten up my lights. Um, the brighter part of things. And I gotta start thinking, okay, this is a bush, tree, 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 tree. What are these? Are these the edges of a field? No, I think those are gonna be more trees. So they get to be bigger than the edges of a field or of a bush. But back here, I think these are probably bushes. These are probably bushes. This is probably just the edge of some grass. And also thinking, you know, how do things appear and disappear behind the hillsides a little bit. Um, where do I want bigger shapes? Because if I get, you know, if I start dissecting everything, all my fields into these, you know, tons of little shapes, it's going to get super busy. Like if all of a sudden this field became four fields, you know, if I just all of a sudden came in and this could work, maybe, maybe I just throw a line in like this. That's kind of cool, right? That could kind of work. Maybe it, gets a little bigger over here. But if I all of a sudden do it again, I don't know, it's still kind of cool. Maybe it's getting borderline busy. You're just always asking how much can the painting take? Um, but I probably don't want to split all my fields up into all these little shapes like this. But again, if this is kind of my focal area, then having a couple of nice little shapes back here may be interesting. I've got to worry though, look at, I made a tangent, didn't I, where the triangle ends right at the tree. So maybe I don't use my fingers and I use a paper towel instead. And, uh, Maybe I make that triangle finish just a little before the tree. So it's close enough, but it's not right on it. Now we've got to decide, is this too generic? Like this right into the scene that's kind of fun. 
but is it too perfect? I don't know. We'll see. I've got a little bit of time before this paint dries completely and locks that in. I, I actually kind of think that maybe helps. A little more of severe angle versus two perfect matching angles going in there. And again, speak up if you have any strong opinions anytime during the painting. I like the whole idea of having it be interactive. All right, so now we've got our darks. We're back here with the trees. Kind of coming back in behind there to make them interesting. I have a little opening here, but I'm wondering maybe let's open that up a little more. Might have to put a light area just to remind myself that I'm clear cutting these trees. Just so the eye has somewhere to skip back into. So it's not only following the darks, but I'm also giving it the opportunity to follow the lights. Now we're back to a slightly lighter back here as we're dealing with kind of our forest back here. This is a little denser area. Um, so I'm gonna have to bring in the lights in these trees to contrast against the shadows, the darks of this kind of bigger, more substantive place. And hopefully that will kind of counterbalance this to that as well. Getting to my lighter blues now. And I got to remember too that these edges are going to get softer as they go back. So now we were dealing with our values, our darks are getting lighter. And then our colors are getting more blue and cool and gray as they go back. And I'm also going to be dealing with my edge quality. I want crisper edges generally as I come forward and softer edges between contrasting things as we recede back into space. starting to come together a little bit, isn't it? I mean, there's starting to be this kind of movement. There's starting to be this kind of form to it, um, kind of a bit of a structure. You know, again, all this <clears throat> in here, I just need to get rid of it really quickly. It's so distracting um, and hard to see past. Um, so let's Let's deal with that. Let's get rid of this. So what time is it? 1030. Do you guys mind if I take another five minute break real quick? Uh, I need to <laughs> blow my nose and stuff. And then I'll clean up this palette a little bit. And then what we'll do is make the field colors and come in. So five minute break. Uh, let's meet back at 1033, if that's OK. I don't know exactly what time it is, but. <coughs> Uh, 1035. 10.35. Everybody get up, stretch your legs. Oh, and I'll take some more, figure out something.
All right, I'm trying to figure out why it seems to me to be still a touch blurry. Um, it's not too bad. Does it look okay for you, Michelle? Does it look blurry at all for you or solely? It does kind of look blurry. I can't tell if it's the brush strokes or... It is a little bit blurry. Yeah, I wonder why. I don't know if the lens somehow got a little dirty. Just doesn't quite want to seem to focus. The, more. the wood on the right is in focus more than, so it's probably because it's angled away. So it's trying to find a spot Could somewhere be. in the angle. There you go. That might help. All right. So like to put up something. All right, so here's some letters, which I can't read at all. Can you read those on the screen? That's blurry. It's blurry. How about if you shifted it over to the right there? there? You can read that. Went a little too far. There. It went too far again. Okay. There, that's good. So that feels a yeah, little bit more focused. That's much better. Oh, yeah, it is. OK, good. Phew. Yeah, unfortunately, if I move the camera anymore to the left, then I'm standing literally on top of the tripod. What I need to probably do is invest on a big armature that comes over and hangs off the top of the, from my ceiling somehow, so it's not in my way. But I'm going to have to double everybody's price. <laughs> yeah even now i'm still like when i'm painting the tripod leg is in front of me in between me and the painting so it's all right all right is that time 
Yep, it is. All right, so let's let's make some nice field colors. So we're going to be kind of thinking some of the same stuff as far as colors are concerned and values as we go back. But now we're thinking more on the flat or flatter planes, um, the fields and the different things. And this gives us a lot of opportunity to play with color and hopefully have a good time. So I'm going to take some of this blue that we were using way back there. I'm going to throw it down here and I'm just going to use that as my to mix so that there's already kind of a harmony. And you can see how gray that green turn almost matches the uh, mixing surface. And then I'm going to probably want to lighten that up. It's not a, a huge amount lighter. Remember our values get closer to each other as they recede into space. The values get more extreme or more high, more separate of each other as they come forward. So we don't want a huge value jump between our fields and our far back shadow tree areas. But we do want some. Also, these colors are being influenced by the sky colors. So I'm bring even some of that pink in there if I want a little bit. Let's test that and see if I'm even closer, if that too big of a jump as I bring in my, I'm thinking all the way back here now. It's not too bad. That's really nice. Yeah, it's a pretty close fit. Um, and we can have some gradations. You know, all our fields don't need to be the same color. I'll add a little more pink to some of it as I get even further back and see what happens here. Might be a little too warm, so I'm going to cool that down. I'm going to touch that gray, touch that pink. And let's see what happens here. I'm going to go to a bigger area. That feels too dark, so I'm going to lighten that up. I'm going to go ahead and cover a big swath just to see so I can get a better read on it. I want it to be probably just a touch lighter than those shadowy trees back there. It's very shiny for you guys. Let's see if I move it around a little bit. Yeah, so it's just a touch lighter than those trees, kind of the shadow shapes that I've got back there. And what I like too is when I come back in and paint these fields, I can actually carve out some of those tree shapes and make them possibly a little more interesting if I want to. And the one thing I, I try to remember when I am um, <clears throat> putting in kind of my fields and stuff is that the bottom sides of my shadows are generally going to be a little flatter. Those are, you know, where the trees are meeting the ground back here, kind of along the field um, division areas. And then the tops can be a little more bumpy because that's the tops of the trees and they're a little more organic and uh, stuff. So yeah, just kind of remember that. That will help them feel like trees and uh, both on the bottoms of them and in the tops.
So by putting that, by this area starting to cool down, I, I should be able to start to read the whole scene better without these warm oranges peeking up kind of annoyingly. Uh, I might be able to let little bits of that sparkle through, but not so much that it's ruining the illusion of, you know, the, the weather and the time of day and everything else. Oh, that got dark. Kind of looks like a lake in the middle there. The orange or this blue? The blue. It does kind of. Hopefully that'll turn into trees. Maybe I could add some water down in there, a little lake down there. But, but you're right. It really, And that's the thing. With the orange, the blue feels all the bluer. Once I get rid of most of that orange, watch what happens. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that blue will calm down. Otherwise, we'll have to figure out something to do with it. It's reforestation instead of deforestation. I'm bringing back the agriculture all of a sudden. My desert plains have been watered and Central Oregon got some rain today, finally, with all the fires going on. So I can just pretend that's what's going on here. I'm watering the Central Oregon Agricultural Corridor, which is actually where I was supposed to be camping this week. But the reservoir that we camp at, Wiki up. <clears throat> is 100% empty due to the droughts in Central Oregon over the last four years. So. And now they've got massive fires up there. Is Wikiup mostly recreational or do they use it for their water supply? It's, it's an actual privately owned farmer's reservoir. So they use it for uh, recreation but it's at the farmer's discretion. They own it. They bought it a long time ago. And so we've been going there since my daughter was born. Every summer with the same group of about 50 to 70 people, we make a huge campsite. There's a whole bunch of kids, all my daughter's age, that were all born at the same time. I guess that's why they would be the same age. Um, and uh, anyways, we call it the play group. Super fun, super great group. And uh, every year the lake is, or the reservoir has gotten shallower and shallower. It's a longer and longer hike down to the water. And we take a number of, a number of the people have boats and the kids have learned water skiing and all that. But uh, it's gotten trickier and trickier. And then there's, because it's a reservoir, there's uh, stumps in the bottom of it. And uh, we've lost a couple motors to stumps, which is always really expensive and really sad. Um, so. We stopped going there this year, and everybody's at another lake. Um, this year, we didn't go. Um, and it sounds like it's a good thing kind of we didn't because they, uh, the, there's no running water there. There's, that just stopped last night for some reason. So they're trying to, they're kind of panicking and trying to figure out what to do without any running water. Oh, it's starting to feel so much better. Even just that little bit of pink now doesn't bother me because it kind of relates to here, but it's getting cooler and hopefully it still kind of feels a little bit lake-like, but I think it would be more lake-like if I was reflecting the sky colors down into it. So if we decided we wanted a lake in the middle of our painting, we could, but I still do believe that this green is, or this blue is too blue. So we'll, we'll still have to probably come back in and do something about that here in a little bit. The greens are getting a little greener as I come forward. 
meaning that the yellows are starting to show up. Yellow is one of the first colors that disappears as things recede into space. That's why you'll often see purple mountains or blue mountains. You don't see far away green mountains when you actually observe the colors. Well, you will think they're green because we know that they're covered in trees or whatever. But, um, but the truth is the yellow is falling out and that things will turn blue or, or purple or because red is the second color to recede and then blue is the last color and that's why that's why things look blue far off in space. I kind of like the little bits of warm that's speckling through a little bit. It's kind of nice. Um, and that's one of the reasons I like having warm or underpaintings a lot of the time, because you get that nice kind of uh, vibration, maybe is a good way to say it, between the warms and the cools. Soften these edges back here. <coughs> But all of a sudden now it's starting to feel more solid and more related and more um, harmonious. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lighten up and blue, now make some of these fields slightly different colors so that it's not such a big boring area back here. We can actually bring in some fun, slight variations in the color like what if this field it's got some kind of vegetation that's just slightly bluer more turquoisey feeling see how that just breaks it up we got the warm then the cool and then back here i can mimic that color somewhere else a little bit so it's not just sitting by itself And just those slight variations all of a sudden add a little interest. So it's not just so, so, so repetitive. At least I hope so. Um, I'm going to add a little more yellow. Let's, let's pretend there's some mustard or something going way back there. So now when you go up on top of a hill to go uh, spend time with your romantic other or just to uh, take a break from life in general, observe and just look into the fields and Watch how they, the subtle differences, a little bit of yellow back in that one. Let's make it even a little more yellow. I don't wanna go crazy. Let's bring this one into this field, kind of our focal area, right? So let's make this one a little more dramatic, dynamic. I'm still letting some of those greens that we just put in there show through so it harmonizes. It's kind of got that speckled, a little bit, slightly kind of an impressionistic brush stroke. And that's like, you know, that's what I like about it when I, you know, try to figure out, okay, am I an impressionist? And I'm, am I a tonalist? And I like to think that hopefully I'm taking different qualities from all these different um, styles and bringing them in because I'll use, you know, the the dry brushing and the speckling of uh, tonal or of uh, impressionism, letting the different colors optically mix to the viewer. But I sure like kind of more of a color harmony like the tonalists would have. Uh, look at that all of a sudden, see that hill, how it just came alive and everything all of a sudden that becomes kind of the focal area. Try not to look at this passage of color and your eye just keeps getting drawn back to it. You know, and it kind of bounces around a little bit. Um, now I can start using some of these colors that are in this field and I can come back in and add 
detail into these trees like we that we're able to see through the trunks a little bit and see some of that field back there behind them. And all of a sudden that just kind of gets interesting. So all of a sudden now it is kind of becoming more of the focal area because our eyes attracted to <clears throat> our eyes attracted to the uh, the interesting little shapes, the details. You know, and it's not like screaming, stare here, look at me, look at me, everybody. But it's hopefully just enough that our eyes are like, ooh, that's an interesting spot. There's fun things to look at and explore there. Isn't that nice? All of a sudden, just having this little tree line hinted at down here. I like to just tell you guys the compliments I want you to give me. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Michael, I'm bothered a little bit by the top part of that darker blue in the middle. There are five little spots marching across the top of it. No, go up farther. There, it's like polka dots in the back note, farther up, farther up. What looks the like lake. water? Those, yeah, it's like polka dots. <laughs> and it unfortunately draws my eye there as opposed to some other places. Perfect, so we're talking about right where the bottom. Right, right there, yeah, there are five, five dots. Oh, good. <laughs> Gone. Look at that. Look what I'll do for my students. I just clear cut a whole forest. <laughs> yep, no, nope, that's good. Again, yeah, I just I haven't really stepped back and it's nice. And yeah, I don't want repetition in anything. I want things, I mean, the field could have repetition, but like the trees and the different structures, um, it's nice to it's nice to have that. And I'm kind of feeling like maybe a line. So everything's kind of and now my eye is definitely shooting off over here. So I'm wondering maybe a line here, here somehow. So the eye is and then kind of back in. So I'm just gonna hint at something. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be so, so, so much. And that kind of mimics up here. I don't know if it's too close of a mimic. We can kind of soften that. This is now feeling very warm, isn't it? It's kind of, I've got these two fields with a lot more orange showing through and they're very warm, but I got to decide, I kind of like it because it's Kind of, you know, letting my eye bounce around, but maybe it's a little too much. Maybe I'm going to bring a little more green into it. find the strongest pink patches and, and then knock those back just a touch. That blue is still too, too blue right in the middle, isn't it? It just really kind of screams out, look at me. Um, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to make it so it's not so big and I'm going to bring in some of those grays. I'm going to bring my field into it. In theory, I should probably take my Q-tip in 
but let's see if I can just do it with just straight paint. So kind of got tree, tree. Maybe there's a river back there. Yeah, maybe something like that. Maybe that might be a fun addition. Didn't quite, quite get bright enough. Let's, well, let's think. If we did a river, we'd probably have to come across somewhere on the flats. And this, none of this is very flat. It's all hill, 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 hill. So if I'm looking at this as like actual terrain, this is where the hills come together. So my river set by pure logic would probably be down here, right? Kind of down in the valley. Can maybe turn off there. I could show a little reflection of it. And then where does it go? Here and then off the side here. That would be interesting. Should we try it? You can hear by the skepticism in my voice, I'm a little nervous, but that doesn't mean I don't want to try it. I don't know if it's necessary. I think it might yeah, take like away that. from your focal point. Yeah, I agree. I think it might distract. Yeah, it'd be pretty. I think it's there already. Okay. Yeah. I think that hard blue line indicates that that might be water. You think, but that that's what it looks like to me, too. Uh huh. Water. But it's already there, and don't don't bother it. But wait, you think that this blue is water? Uh huh. Uh, I don't want it to be water. I think that light area looks like a lake to me. The light area about a third, yeah, that looks like a lake to me. Hmm. Which I don't think it can be, just because of the roll of the hill. So I want this to be trees. So I'm going to darken it. Yeah, that's better. And then I'm going to, sorry, no lakes for anybody. Keep telling me where the lakes are and I'll keep taking them out. What do we want to do? Maybe I'll even clear cut this and let that field through. Isn't that interesting? Just these little dashes all of a sudden become entire fields and entire tree lines, hopefully. Um, now I'm just kind of looking like this whole area became too wishy-washy, maybe. I kind of like it, but I think just let's just strengthen the base of the shadows a little bit, tight, straighten them out. All right, now we have the tops of these trees. We're going to add some color in there. We can bring some kind of browner colors on top. And then we also have basically this whole lower third I haven't touched. If we want to adjust the colors, if we don't want just weird dark lines in here, um, we can adjust all of that. So let's go to the tree tops. And because uh, I'm actually going to bring in the tops of some of these trees even a little further back. And maybe that will help this area back here. Um, I'm kind of thinking an earthy green. So I'm going to go ahead and add red to it right away. And my blues. And my yellow. And I want to use not this brush since it's my new brush to mix colors. I want to keep it nice for at least one more day. So set that aside and I'll use this scrubby brush. I could even use my palette knife like I hope you guys do. So there, it made a very dark, 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 fairly hideous green. It's going to be way too dark for the tops of these trees. 
going to add a little yellow and just a touch of white to it. Not much. I don't want to uh, I already did. Turn gray. I'm going to bring this in front of the camera so you guys can see the color a little better as I'm mixing it. It's a uh, very strange gray green right now. Let's take some Payne's gray. Oops. Take some Payne's gray and my little yellow. There we go. Just need it to be lighter than this a little bit, but I still want it pretty dark. I don't want it anywhere as near as light as the fields and stuff around it. I'll tell you. I also probably want it a touch warmer. All right. So we've got three different values there, kind of a darker, a medium, and a lighter. They're pretty close. They're not, there's not huge, huge jumps because I'm still just kind of dealing with the little tops of these trees. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and normally I would paint from dark to light, but I want to test this light color up against the edges of the uh, fields and whatnot and see how that looks. So it's okay, but I actually think it could be a little redder. And I want these warms on top to come forward compared to these other trees. So I'm gonna kind of play up the warms a little bit. Again, my light's kind of coming across from the right a little bit. It's kind of a slightly hazy day, so it's not a super strong light. So my contrast between my shadows and my lights are not, you know, so, so, so um, strong. So when you're out or when you're, you know, observing, look at that. Look at, is it a strong, strong light? Then it probably has a strong, crisp shadow. If it's a softer light or a reflected light, it probably has softer shadows. And then you look between the contrast of the lights <clears throat> and the shadows and that edge between the two, the lights and the shadows will be softer when the light source is not as strong. Now I'm transitioning to the mids and my darks. And then I soften my touch a little bit as I get towards the shadows. So when I'm beginning to blend into the shadows, usually my edge between the lights and the shadows here can be a little softer, like there's a transition. And I'm just kind of thinking of the structure of the tree as I kind of wrap around, like how do the leaves, lie on the branches, how do the branches connect to the trunks? How is all that kind of sitting there? And again, I personally like the canopy shape of oak trees and the, uh, a lot of the trees here in the Pacific Northwest. So I oftentimes kind of play that up. And that's, you know, that's just kind of one of the little stylistic things that makes it my painting. Um, you're probably attracted to different qualities in the trees than I am. And that's great. Where are you imagining your light source is coming from? Slowly, light, it's coming from the right to the left. 
So it's hitting kind of on these edges. Sure. But it's not extreme. Like I said, it's not casting real strong shadows. It's just sort of there. You know, I could make these leaves a little brighter, but I think I've got kind of enough transition between the darks and the lights that it's got form. Um, and I, I can kind of live with it for a little bit and come back in and lighten up if I think I need to. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just, again, I'm still doing that testing thing. So now I'm gonna get back to these trees. So I can use some of this color but what I'm going to want to do is probably blue it down a little bit because it's just like the shadows, my contrast and my colors, even in the lights, are going to get just slightly, slightly cooler, slightly lighter. It's up to you how much you want to push and pull that. Um, Same thing's gonna happen to the trees as they go back a little further. And I gotta remember too that my values, even though the, the, the from the dark to light here's not that much, it's even gonna be less than that as I go back into space. I always enjoy this part of it as uh, kind of giving the tops of the trees a little bit of color. It's always fun for me because they go from just these kind of flat, dark objects to hopefully having just a, just a hint of life and structure and personality just by adding a little bit of color on top. And then as we get back here, you're just really not going to see the difference on the tops of the trees hardly at all. It's very, very subtle. It's, you know, maybe not even existent. It's just, yeah, the values really just begin to merge. That's why the whole hill in the back can all of a sudden appear blue. Um, the more contrast I put into things further they go back that just means that the less atmosphere less atmospheric perspective I have means it's clearer than it was um, now I get to come through and decide this field's colors um, you know and we still could we could literally come in and add a clover field or you know we could decide what time of year this is is it spring do we have fun things going on or is it uh, right, right now it looks feels like early kind of spring to me with that kind of bright light green um, there's a little bit of the earth kind of more um, gold showing which is kind of what's happening now when you go out and drive around the fields is uh, they're starting to warm up there's more of the earth showing through the the wheats and stuff are turning gold um, you know in the spring you can have the different flowers and different things and I guess some in the summer as well. So it's fun to watch what happens to the fields throughout the year as they uh, change colors. We're pretty lucky where we live here. Um, our home is kind of on the boundary of a lot of um, farms and vineyards and uh, different things that I love to paint, um, marshes and wetlands as well. Um, and, you know, so I'm always observing as I'm driving back and around and just seeing what's going on in there. All right, what do you guys think? What should I do? I've got this field, this little area here, this field. 
I want to carve in some more interesting, cleaner shapes here. I don't like this big dark mass here. Um, I still got to do oh the tops of this bush. Let's make this bush a little more reddish, just for to show that it's different than than um, <clears throat> the trees. And by reddish, I don't mean extremely red. It's just kind of a more of a red foliage. So I'm just going to And if I like it, I can bring that bush along the edge of lots of these fields. So it's just slightly more reddish than here. I could, you know, I could always make that a little more extreme if I wanted to, especially maybe on the edges where it's picking up the light. Let's push that red a little more just for some interest. We'll see. I might get that might be distracting right here in the corner, but maybe I can, you know, bring that color throughout the painting and make it tie in. Um, all right. What do you guys think? Should we try to make the fields more colorful at all? Should we bring in any other colors or should I let it be this kind of early spring, just softly rolling hills feel? I like the rolling hills feel, Just kind but of the, the, the foreground is starting to bother me. Yeah, these lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Take out, the, take out the long middle one. See what happens. This one or this one? This one? That one. All right. I have an idea. I want to take them both out, but I'm going to hint at them ever so slightly. So they're there, but not strong. They're just kind of like mode in versus trick, uh, really strong. Much better. <laughs> Isn't that funny? All right, so, well, that's gonna make it a little bit easier and we might actually finish the class on time because um, I'll be able to just kind of match up some of these greens, but I'm gonna let them be a little warmer as we come forward. Possibly a little bit more yellowy. Let's see what happens if I put that up next to this guy. We get a little lighter. The funny thing is, is I'm still going to consider this a plein air painting, <laughs> probably. Um, just because it was really started and designed and thought out out there, even though I've come back in. You see that, just that little poke over here, breaking up that space and all of a sudden it's so much more interesting. I'm probably the only one that's bothered by this, but all those white little speckles in the background, they draw my eye on the right upper side. You know, you know cut right there, the land mass with all the white, that bothers me. Hmm, I don't know if it's white. I think it's just the reflections. Okay, maybe it's just the way I'm seeing it through the viewfinder. 
A hundred percent. Yeah, there's all these glares on here. Every different angled brush stroke and thickness has a glare. That's why I'm constantly like bobbing my head back and forth trying to see because normally I would paint with this overhead light, but it blasts out the scene for you guys. For me, I can totally see it, but. Um, that helped to get rid of the spottiness. So I see it's just reflection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of agree with Karen in there where when you first started the painting in my mind, I envisioned poppies in that foreground field, but then you might have to bring a little bit in the back somewhere, but. Yeah, I definitely can. That's always, I mean, poppies are super fun. Um, you know, a red is always a nice color. Um, we can try it. Since this is pretty dry here can try it and then so if I put red here though then it feels like a separate painting right right no. red here mm -hmm. and then I could put it here no in the middle Don't put red in Don't the put middle red. where you lower your this? finger lower your finger yeah where your center yes, of interest yes, yes right in there yeah and going if um the edge is the center Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring in some red there. Oh, for, for your focus point? Yeah. I mean, it's nice to put some flowers up front and then let that lead the eye back. You know, it's kind of our Ramona Youngquist, right? The friend I was <laughs> Yes, Ramona. I love her. <laughs> me too, me too. So we're just trying to imagine it, trying to visualize it. All right, let's try. Let's see what happens. Scary, scary. <laughs> so we're going to kind of have the top of the hill would be the strongest, like the densest, because we'd be looking through a whole bunch of them, and then it would thin down slightly as it comes. Poppies. Red poppies, not orange. Or at least red flowers. I've lost my audio. My... All right, let's bring. Yeah, that kind of feels like a field of flowers, doesn't it? Now where? I was kind of thinking this middle one, that might be too obvious. Kind of go against this edge. I think they need to show up between the trees too. Here? Yes, yes. That's what I was thinking. Just a little red in there. And I don't think having them just in this one field is very, it's kind of nice, but it's, you know, we can bring some in here. Yeah, bring some down instead of up. Down into the field. Uh, I'm gonna do one thing. Big field. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go up first, but I'm gonna cool them down. I like this little field back here. So I blued those, cooled them down, so they're kind of falling back into space, hopefully. It's just kind of an echo of the color. Now, 
Now we can get a little more crazy up here. Move this slightly. So I'm going to hint at this. I think that changes your center of interest. Yeah, it really does. To being more in the foreground. Yes. I was thinking maybe just a little patch back by your center of interest. It's pretty, but. Yeah, always a test. Maybe a white barn peeking out in that one field behind the middle yeah. in that corner, yeah, might might draw your focus back in. Painting by committee. <laughs> yep, exactly. The good news is I can just come and wipe these trees off if we decide. But I'm starting to kind of feel like I like them. It's always scary. Well, it's always so beautiful to see a field of poppies. Right. It really is. I'm just trying to do enough, but not too many. I'm gonna start darkening them as I bring them forward, maybe just a touch. Still having fun, but yeah, not yet very positive about it. Maybe a little peach reflects on him from your sky. Bring some of the cooler light color down in. Yeah, I'm gonna, it's interesting. I kind of like it. And I kind of like this kind of broken, jaggedy line that's beginning to materialize there. All right, let's try some, get some peachy color in there a little bit. It's a totally different painting. Now my eyes hits the flowers in the foreground immediately and I don't see the painting as a whole. 
Yeah, that's what happens, right? It becomes, it becomes, um, yeah, almost two paintings. Mm -hmm. And then you hope that the other stuff becomes supporting cast. And if not, why? Why is my eye not allowing you to go? Or why is your eye not going past this? And maybe, what if we... Does that invite the eye back a little further? Not really. Still kind Maybe of... Maybe the horizontal line in the foreground stops the eye. This yes. Yeah, dark. Just, yes. Uh, no, well, in the, 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 the foreground where the poppies leave the off, that forms a, a horizontal line across where your eye wants to cross the road, so to speak, but it's not allowed. I agree, it divides it. This line? No, the, the red, red line poppies. with the poppies. Yeah, what would happen if this field also became red? Like, does it become too crazy? Yeah. 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 All right, so do we just remove our poppies? I think I like the poppies on the left. I agree. Or maybe with a touch of dark green that, um, in, but then um, getting rid of them uh, in the dead center and maybe just a few peripheral ones on the right. I don't I, know. I totally support that. I, I, I yeah. was thinking that far left brings your eye into the picture and maybe just some escaped poppies along the right um, edge, dark edge over there, and the rest of it green. That then takes you back. Yeah. And that'll take you back into the painting. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact, Michael, with the original painting, it just, just kept going back, back, back. And it was so interesting, the different levels and grounds. And now I stop right there. Yeah, so I'm actually thinking of getting rid of the poppies. I think I also like them here, but I just don't feel like it's right for this painting. I think that that's a good tool for, you know, another painting. Sure. Actually, it kind of makes the, the middle ground and background look more flat. Before, it just kept going back, 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 and it just doesn't have that anymore. Right, so you're saying in a bad way it's doing that. No, no, it's a beautiful painting. I just feel like what I loved, I loved the original painting, even if it had black lines on the foreground. I just thought that's so neat. It keeps going back, 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 back. And right. I just loved the depth that it was following. Let's try and get it back. So that's what I do, right? I, I play, I experiment, I try things. What what if, what works and what doesn't work? <laughs> yeah, you just, it, and that's part of play. That's part of experimenting is being willing to go big. And the nice thing about oil paints. So yeah, yeah. A little bit forgiving. That's to me better. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> All right, so if I did that, can I leave the poppies in or is it still too much? Too much. I'll make yeah. that green. Well, that's right. my opinion. I just love the way it, I can think of the word, it kept going further back and further back and further back. And I, I don't, didn't see that with those red poppies. I'm just yeah. looking at those red poppies. I agree with you for sure. I, I don't know if I'm right, but <laughs> I just loved your first painting. All right, well, let's see if we can get back towards that. All right, so get back all these poppies. Yeah, I'm just going to grab some uh, paint thinner here and just roll my brush against it. And now all it is is just a bunch of lava. And clean paper towel.
And the good news is, is we were going to come back in and paint these fields anyways. Or at least do something. I do like that little bit of red there on the left. All right, I'm going to move this just so I can get a better angle at wiping back away. I just don't want it to be slick so I can apply some paint a little faster to it here. It's amazing how strong of a stain that red is. It really wants to stick on there, but that might be okay, kind of peeking out from underneath the, uh, the green. One more pass. I'm just going to try and wipe a little more off this part of it. I actually like the green now in the fields. It's turned more olive. And I, I think it complements the background and um, adds interest to the foreground where there's hardly any lines there, but your eye easily goes over the foreground and leads you to the focal point. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because warm colors, even when they're ugly warm colors, they just want to come forward. All right, so let's go ahead and mix up some colors, some greens again, which we can use the ones that we already have, luckily. And I'm going to let some of that show through. You're right, because it does want to kind of come forward. Um, I obliterated the, the lines there, but I'm not sure we quite loved them anyways. Let's see. It's kind of like in there and kind of there. I'm just not going to make them as strong. The other ones that I had there before. Perfect. Perfect. Show. That, that pushes the back further back. I like that. Yeah. And then I had this one a little sharper. So let's go ahead and mix some greens. I am going to let, yeah, like I said, I'm going to let some of those reds show through. Go lighter than that. But yeah, I mean, I. I, I appreciate the challenge and the idea of the red flowers. I don't think it was a bad idea and I think it was definitely worth trying and it was fun. And I'm hoping that you guys, by seeing that, just kind of go, oh, so we can try things, especially on a dry painting. Um, you know what I mean? I was able to wipe back almost completely. Um, and you know what I mean? We just don't know until, you know, unless you're using Photoshop and testing things on there, which a lot of artists do, um, but I, I I enjoy pushing things a little bit too far and trying going big with things. Um, and even like I said, even if this painting, even if I had just killed this painting, at least maybe I would have learned some things for the next painting and just said, you know what, don't do that, or you know what, those poppies were cool, just they weren't meant for this painting. All 
remember my greens are getting a little warmer, a little more yellow as they come forward, possibly if I want them to. Is this Yam Hill County? Um, it's right outside Dundee. So is that Yam Hill still? Yes, yep. it is Yam Hill. Exactly right. Yeah, I paint out there a lot. My sister lives in Lafayette and uh, I work with a bunch of those vineyards from time to time out there. And then I also show in Newburgh at Art Elements Gallery. So lots of good excuses to uh, get out there, paint, try some wine. All the vineyards out there are so pretty. See if I can hint at some rows, just a little bit there. Oh, that's I all like right. That. I really like that. It's very subtle. Just letting those reds kind of show underneath just a touch. Those reds were a happy accident. There you go, Bob Ross. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Happy accidents are my best teacher, I think. If you're willing to, you know, that's, again, that's, yeah, just being present when you're painting, it's hard to do. Sometimes we just kind of go off and, you know, fade out. And, but if you can just kind of be aware and like, okay, how, how, what just happened? What colors was I using? What brush? What, you know, whatever else. Um, and that's why I, I do kind of like limiting all the things is because when something good happens, you want to be able to replicate it. It just hurts my feelings so badly when a student out of the blue all of a sudden just knocks a painting out of the park and then just tells me, I'll never be able to do that again. It's like, oh, <laughs> that's too bad. It should be, that should be your new floor, not your new ceiling. Okay. Right now, I kind of don't mind this passage of the earth kind of browner color showing through there. So I'm going to leave that alone for now as I come towards these greens. And, uh, and then I can decide if I feel like it needs to be changed. Right now, to me, the focal point seems to be the grouping of trees on the left because of that very light space. Yeah, and they're here. Definitely is yes. very interesting. But I'm hoping, though, that you're taking from there still quickly like you don't just stop there it goes there and then over to there and then begin to follow the lines and i'm gonna have to probably do something to kind of bring you back once you travel again my goal is to get you to travel back into space um i'm just realizing these two lines are really consistent i'm gonna have to do something there as well nice 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 um Oh, interesting. We should all know better than to second guess what you're going to do, Michael. It always turns out. <laughs> well, 
Uh, that's very nice of you, but I'm second guessing <laughs> every second and third brush stroke. So um, I'm glad you think I know what I'm doing. That's, I appreciate that. And I don't know what I did to uh, garner that kind of uh, trust. Because, I mean, yeah, just stepping up to this canvas, I told you kind of what I knew about it and then so much that I didn't know about it. And it's in those questions, right? It, it's all questions. All paintings are just setting up a problem and trying to solve it. And the thing to remember is, you know, just because I say it or just because I do it is not the right solution. That's just a solution. There's a thousand million possible solutions. And every time we step up to the canvas, we might solve it completely differently. And that's, that's the joy is setting a problem, a challenge. And it's not like math. It doesn't have a right answer or a wrong answer. It just has a lot of possible answers. I feel like I'm getting repetitive with some of those ideas, but it is what I enjoy so much about painting. Tapping into my darks a little bit here. I just kind of want these greens to be kind of, again, hinted at, but I'm thinking that um, I can bring kind of the dark sides of whatever it is. I don't know if they're cabbages or just some grasses or what, but again, just kind of mimicking the, the shadow side, just like the trees. It's on the left. The shadows are on the left of whatever these things are. Just organic green things. <coughs> Wondering what this guy, if he needs to be a little lighter. I'm gonna lighten this, this trail so that this trail is aiming a little more towards where I want it still there mimicking the other one but not as strong so yeah this spot here is quite bright um so my eye definitely wants to come here it's very interesting and beautiful so maybe i can darken into there a little bit Make it a little less attractive. All right. What are your thoughts now as we start to wind it down, at least for today? Kind of like it. Yes, putting, nice <laughs> putting that, um, the foreground, changing that, your eye doesn't focus immediately on the two trees on the left. Right. Okay, when I step back even just a step, this line is so extreme. So I'm gonna knock that. So it's not just a straight, straight line. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I think I'll kind of just knock a 
kind of a clearing into it. And I'm thinking kind of almost mimicking this triangle, but in reverse. So it allows the eye to kind of shoot back like a way in and shoot over to there, hopefully. Maybe it can bring that dark here to kind of lead the eye across. Let's get rid of even a little more of that <clears throat> just in case. Whatever that dark is, we're just going to make it a little more irregular. And I'm going to add maybe just the barest of hints of like a, a bit of a trail slash path slash dirt road maybe. Very subtle. I don't hate it. <laughs> That's nice. It's much, much, much better than the sketchy thing that we started with. I'm proud of us for taking some risks and then reeling it back in. I think that was a lot of fun. Scary. But I, you know, I think we got to be willing to be scared a little bit when we're painting for growth and for lessons and just try new things. Um, It'd be nice to see the picture uh, before you started next to what you finished. Okay, I'll to try see to, the before and after. Yeah, I'll do a screenshot when I go back in and edit to load the video. Good idea. Okay, phew. That was fun. I don't know why I thought I was going to possibly do two paintings today. <laughs> hey. Cough medicine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome back, everybody. That Thank was you. fun. That was a, um, a good challenge. And I'm hoping you, you learned, um, you know, about taking your paintings from the sketching stage and the values and just kind of having fun. Um, you could see how if I had toned it, which is kind of how it looked, right? It's as if I did the black and white and then it... Um, and then kind of glazed into it with some of those warmer colors and then went across all of it with the uh, blues, grays, greens, all those uh, nice cool colors. <coughs> um, it was a lot of fun. I really apologize that we don't have time to um, go through and look at everybody's work, but let's just promise that we'll do that. All of us will go to the Facebook page um, and go ahead and leave, you know, a nice comment. And um, let's take a little bit of time to look through each other's work and uh, see what's going on. Um, I will keep the page open um, forever, as long as Facebook lets me. So you can review back to the videos. And if you guys wanna keep conversations going, I think on a couple of our other groups, um, I think there's still some conversations going between some students. Um, you can do that and uh, keep, adding stuff I will try 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 to remember to peek back at it it's not my strongest suit I try to stay off the computer um, not because the computer's evil just because I'm weak and once I get on there I find a couple hours go by really quickly and I'm not painting um, and so uh, anyways I will try to get on there and um, I've got uh, a couple commitments this afternoon but maybe um, maybe tomorrow I can get on there. Looks like I got paint in my mouth. Yep. 
All right, I'll go deal with that here in just a little bit. You guys are fantastic. I look forward to um, the next class. And we have, what, five minutes left? Yeah, five minutes left. You, any questions you guys have for me before you go? Yes, Michelle? Um, can you just quickly review the painting of the edges um, and the, the finishing, the ceiling of it? Okay. The yeah, I'm going to try to go to gallery view and unpin myself so we can all see remove spotlight. Okay, everybody gets to see each other. Wow, everybody's still here. That's a first. <laughs> Normally, I get to the end. I'm like, oh, well, at least four of you made it. Um, great. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate you uh, hanging out with me. And, and again, I don't. You, it's your time. So when you need to leave, leave. But um, the questions were about painting the sides. So here's an example. Um, so this is the one painted on the panel box versus today's was painted on a very thin, uh, just a panel. Um, I think that panel actually has canvas on it, glued to it. It's a Raymar panel. Sorry, Kathleen, I can't hear you if you're talking. Oh, shotgun door, somebody else. Um, but anyway, so this comes uh, raw wood, right? Just like it looks like the wood underneath it. So what I do for the edges, and sometimes I paint them before I even start painting, because sometimes that's easier. So what I do is I take um, black acrylic paint and paint them. That's the most basic. You can take black gesso, but I find that gesso, even though it's so beautiful and dense, is very soft and very absorbent, so it gets damaged very quickly. I found that with the black gesso ones, I was having to go back and touch them up all the time. So then black acrylic paint became my next choice because it's got a little bit more of a shine to it and it's nice and easy. Then the next step that I did after that was I put black, uh, acrylic varnish, is that right? Acrylic glaze, anyways, like a high gloss glaze and mixed that with the acrylic paint. So now it's really shiny and it's uh, almost crystalline and any smudges and stuff that get on there, I can almost wipe them off with just a wet paper towel versus having to repaint it all the time before I get it to the gallery. Um, so I've made up, it's about a 75% paint to 25% high gloss acrylic medium of some sort. Um, and you can figure out that. And what I do is I mix a big batch of it. That way, when I have to go back and retouch, it's most likely the same paint. And for uh, my galleries, what I did was gave them brushes with um, a little, little thing of it that I made up so that if things happen, you know, in the gallery, which they all, of course do, um, they can just touch them up so that, um, you know, yeah. Um, and it, it's not my preferred preferred method. I always will probably prefer a framed painting. Um, all the paintings in my house are framed. Um, when I buy paintings from artists, I frame them if they're not framed. Um, I just, and that's just how paintings in my house all look. So having, you know, mostly framed and then one or two not framed, except for my daughter's work, because it's um, abstract. For some reason, she gets to get away with it. Um, she knows how to break the rules in this family. Um, uh -huh. Um, 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 but I, I do find that so many people really like this clean edge and the fact that all my galleries besides um, two galleries and they both frame for me now, which is crazy. I never had that before, but two of my galleries, um, I send the work and they frame them, which is fantastic. Um, and I, yeah, that's not normal. I never had that happen before. Um, I would Go I'm ahead. sorry. I'm going to have to leave because my family's visiting here. Okay, great. And so I'm going to have to leave you, but thank you very much. And I look forward to being in your class in September. Great. Have a great time with your family. Um, the next question was sealing the painting. Is that right? Like, what do I do over the top of it at the end? Um, yeah. I use the gambling. <laughs> I use the Gamblin Gamvar, G-A-M-V-A-R, and that is their varnish. 
Um, here you can see this one, Gamvar. And then right beneath that, it says Matt. Um, this is an older bottle. It, this the, When they first came out with it, they didn't have different types. It was just one. And you can see it's interesting. It's clear on top and um, milky on the bottom. So you would have to shake this up for a while and then it becomes all milky and you wanna put it on when it's milky. Um, but anyways, the new ones, the new batches are much better than the old batches. Um, I use Matt for my gallery at Dragon and Cannon Beach because their lights are highly reflective. But my other galleries, I use satin. I prefer the satin. It gives the paintings a slightly more fresh kind of wet look. And basically all that is, is a, you're gonna wait till your paintings dry and you just take a very, very, very little bit of this, the least amount possible and a nice brush and you just scrub it on. Um, let that dry and you can do another coat, but you, you wanna apply it as thinly as possible. Man, I am pale. <laughs> um, and uh, so they have matte, satin and um, gloss. And that's up to you. The gloss is gorgeous, but it does reflect the light a lot. So you get shiny spots. Just, just think of like your paints for your house, it's the same. So satin is the nice and in between. So it's a fresh look. The matte will have a drier, um, kind of scratchier look to it, but they're all great. They're all protective. And the neat thing about these is to, if you put it on, it dries really fast. Um, and if you decide you don't like it, you can just literally take your Gamsol, the paint thinner, and scrub that on and then a paper towel and wipe it off and it's off and you can start painting again. So that's the best part because um, that happens a lot to me. In fact, yeah, I, I did that yesterday. <laughs> took, some, <laughs> took some paint or uh, some of the stuff off. Um, so that's that. That's how I do my edges. That's how I do that. On the backs of my, oh, not at a good example. Um, one second. Goodbye, I have to leave too. Okay, oh, great. I was just gonna show you on the backs, just the size of the painting, what it was painted with, my name. And then if you have anything you put on, most of them, I just put a business card. This one has a stamp that I made. Um, and then this is just a little thank you note that's on the back of some of my paintings. Um, it just says, you know, thank you. You let me buy more paint. Appreciate it. Um, anyways, if you want to put anything on the backs, uh, anything else? I want Michael. to go strong, but I'm fading. Michael? Yes, Susan. You make house calls? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess I do. I can. You <laughs> My okay. husband told me to kidnap you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Thank not really so a house call anymore. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for, for this. I've had both uh, classes, both uh, workshops, and uh, learned so much. Thank you so much. Great. Well, I hope everybody can come back in September. Um, it was really fun having you, and I look forward to meeting some of you even more. I know there's a couple of you that I just barely uh, got to even learn your names and I apologize for that but four week class and we fill it up but uh anyways keep painting keep adding pictures to our Facebook group uh keep commenting and helping each other and learning from each other and uh have a great six weeks Michael this is Laurie again do you um have to friend me or something to be on your Facebook or I still don't know how to get there I gotta go Michael thank okay, you okay. so much see you in September great is that Sully that said that yeah. All right, Sully, take care. It's always good to have you in class. Thank you. Uh, Lori, just stay on for a second with me. All right, All right Michael. Guys. Thank you. It was awesome, you guys. So good. Thank to you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll get some rain soon. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have soon. Hopefully, we'll have the video posted soon. Take care. Hope you feel better. Oh, thank you. I, I feel fine. Just a little stuffy. <laughs>